this is Sarah Satch. Welcome to our live video chat. Now, just in case you don't know, every Tuesday I try to have a live video chat at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time. And it's Mountain Time because I live in Colorado, just south of Denver. So today's video, I have lots of things to talk about couple of questions to answer and so when you get in be sure and clink in now I wanted to show you this cup this coffee cup isn't that cool well I was going through my Christmas stuff and remember I found my other cup that I couldn't find that's my favorite and I found this one as well and if you know me, you know that I love cardinals, especially at Christmas time. My mother also loved cardinals. And when we lived in Oklahoma, we had a whole family of cardinals that lived in our backyard. They never migrated away. They always stayed in the back of our yard. We lived on about one acre there. We have a little over five acres here. And anyway, this cup I've had for a very, very long time. I think I got it. I'm not sure. Good morning, Sophie and Tina and Wanda. Be sure and clink in. But anyway, I think I got this cup when I was garage selling with my mother because every now and then, my mother loved to garage sell. And every now and then, I think I'm off center a little, my mom and I on a Saturday morning, we'd just go and hit some of the garage sales. And this cup looks like it's been around a while. It's got the male cardinal down here and the female up there. And anyway, I just found it and I remembered how much I just love it. And I have cardinals in all my Christmas decorating. They're on my tree, they're on my wreath. They're just everywhere. So anyway, clink in. It's, we're into the holiday season, Christmas, Hanukkah, lots of holidays coming, lots of gifts to be bought, and lots of crochet to be done. And last week we talked about how not to let your crochet stress you out. Please remember, don't let your crochet stress you out. Okay, now, <laughs> I made this hat, or actually this headband, um, off my pattern that's just my chevron headband pattern super easy to make and I wore it yesterday when because I go to the gym to swim laps in the arthritis pool Monday Wednesday and Friday sometimes I miss but I try to go three days a week anywho <laughs> I wore this and I got a ton of compliments so I thought I'd wear it today it's super easy to make it's my chevron pattern free pattern on my blog it's also a video and I added some fun Christmas buttons so, anywho, like I said, <laughs> welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're all here. And I have a couple of questions that we need to answer before, or before we get into our big conversation. So, first I have a joke for you. I'm wearing my snowman sweater. I'm in Colorado and we are not getting any snow down here south of Denver. We need some snow. I know a lot of people are getting rain. What's the weather like where you're at? It was, I think, uh, 17 degrees this morning. So the grass was pretty crunchy on the dew, but we just didn't get any snow. So I have a snowman joke for you. I found this yesterday in a coloring book. <laughs> I have grandkids. I've got coloring books. All right. The joke is, where do snowmen go to dance? Anybody know? I'll give you a few minutes to see if you can answer that. So where do the snowmen go to dance? <laughs> All right, so let's cover a couple of questions and then I'll get back and answer that. The first question that I wanted to answer is, um, if you were on my YouTube channel this last week, I made a video on Friday that had no talking in it whatsoever for this wreath. Just a simple little wreath. You can use it for applique. You can put a string on it and make it a decoration. Hang it on a package. Hang it on your tree. Use it for your place settings at your table. 
Well, I did that video with no talking whatsoever. And I had a couple of reasons. I'm having some YouTube issues with some things. But also I have a friend who was wanting to learn to crochet that. And she's mostly deaf. And so I thought I would take the opportunity to do that. Well, I have to say it was not received very well. It's just a tiny little, I don't even think it's 10 minutes, video. But I thought it would be a lot of fun. And uh, the main thing was they said they need to hear me talk. Well, one lady told me I, she, uh, my voice reminds her of Roseanne Barr. And I don't know if that's good or bad. And then when, and then when I laugh, they said it sounded like Wilma from the Flintstones. So <laughs> I guess they want to hear me, hear me talk. Blah, blah, blah. So anyway... But then I got a question about that video about who writes the music that I use on my videos. And um, the neat thing is my husband is a fantastic and amazing musician, not magician, <laughs> musician. And he can play just about any instrument. He plays the piano and the clarinet, the saxophone the guitar and he and he can play just about any instrument there is and he has for a long time had a music studio and um, if you see the end of my videos it'll say music by Kedsa Productions well that's all of our initials K-E-D-S-A and that's just what he calls his studio it's nonprofit he does a lot of videos for traveling uh, missionaries or people who need just music for presentations. He does some for his work also as well for some of the videos they do to use their equipment. Well, what I do is I tell him, oh, I want something fun or light or spring or Christmassy. And so he'll write something and then he'll add the instruments and it's a lot of fun. Last year when we first did the Christmas one, he has this thing you hold and it's got a bunch of bells on the end of it. And I was trying to keep in time, shaking the bell. I couldn't keep in time. He's like, let me do this. <laughs> I have no natural rhythm. My husband got all the musical talent. And so anyway, all of the music before, after, and even that long, he wrote a special score for this um video that I did because I wanted it light and soft but I wanted it to flow and so he wrote all of that music and and um, what you what you don't realize is that um, when you write music there is a lot involved in it you have to write the music you have to add the instruments you have to play the instruments and some of his music is canned he's got you know that he'll use that's already pre-recorded that he's done in the past and he can add that in and things like that but he is extremely talented and I'm so blessed to be married to a man with that much talent and so anytime any video that I've ever done all the music was written by my wonderful and talented husband so that answers that question our second question which is our main question and that I get all the time is does the chain three count as a stitch or does it not and where do I put the next stitch sorry I just hit my my light there um, so let me let me put you down onto the bottom cam uh, to kind of show you when you're stitching in a row and you're stitching double crochets a lot of times the pattern will tell you to chain three and turn and that your first stitch is the chain three let me move my coffee cup so I don't knock it onto my computer there alright so what happens is you have a chain three that counts as your first double crochet well you're not going to stitch your first double crochet in this first stitch you're going to stitch it in the next stitch over because the chain three here counted as your first double crochet and that's the way it works when you're stitching in a row when you're just stitching rows of double crochet your chain three counted as your first stitch and you begin your next stitch in the next double crochet but what if you're stitching in a circle here's a circle I made and what usually happens is you'll join to the top of that chain three and then you'll chain three and your chain three sometimes depending on the pattern will count as your first double crochet and when you begin stitching 
it might say stitch that first double crochet in the same stitch as the double crochet and so then you'll go right in that same stitch that you stitched that chain three but if it tells you to stitch in the next stitch you're going to skip that stitch that that double I'm sorry you're going to skip that stitch that that chain three is in and you'll go right to the next stitch rarely when you're stitching, oh, rarely when you're stitching in a circle will you not put a second one in because usually you're increasing like making a hat or a hot pad or something okay another way that it's done is and a good example is when you're making a granny square and here I've got just a basic beginning of a granny square three double crochets chain two on the corners and we'll you'll be in that chain two space and you'll chain three and that will count as your first double crochet and then you'll stitch the two more double crochets right in that chain two space and then you'll chain two and stitch three more double crochets and the reason it's done that way is because if you were to stitch a double crochet first it would probably be bent over and what I mean by that let's go back a little usually when you're in a chain two or three space or even a chain one if you're going to stitch a double crochet in this first chain two space if you go in you pull up your loop I forgot to yarn over let's do the double crochet right do your yarn over go in the, there go in the chain two space pull up a loop and but what I want to show you is your double crochet is not standing tall it's all bent over and so that's why a lot of times when you're doing something similar to a granny square where you have a chain two space you're going to chain three first and it's the same thing when you're stitching in the round if you were to begin that first stitch let's pull this one out and go back to the circle if you were to stitch that first one and just do a double crochet right there your double crochet is all bent over okay now when you're working a pattern and the pattern calls for you to do it that way usually the designer has a reason and I have some I think the the um, candy cane scarf I did last week I'm having you do that double crochet because I want it to curve and so sometimes when a designer a pattern designer has you do it a certain way it's because they're wanting a certain effect on their pattern but for the most part when a chain three counts as a double crochet it's because they want that double crochet to stand up straight and tall so your rows be even flat or around or in say a granny square but remember do what the pattern says and if you have a question contact the designer of the pattern every every designer uh, pattern designer that I know doesn't have any problem with you asking questions I will suggest as I get questions all the time it says it's not working can you help me or I I can't get the pattern to work well it's difficult for as a pattern designer to answer that question so what I suggest to you when you're emailing me or any other pattern designer if you can take a little picture on your phone and send that with your question or just be a little more descriptive in your question because we really want to help you because we want you to love the pattern that we wrote just as much as we do and also keep in mind that pattern designers are people we make mistakes and even my pattern testers are people my pattern testers <laughs> my mouth's getting all jumbled up today <laughs> but even my pattern testers are just people and I have some people that are beginners that I, I love to use them because they have a different take and they'll see something maybe that I don't see and then I have pattern designers that are medium and experienced and some that are other pattern designers that test my patterns and so it's kind of neat to see the different things that people find because even if you run it through a spell check there's no guarantee that's going to be spelled correctly I have grammar check and spell check on mine and I still have spelling and grammar errors so you know it's good to have those people to help you but just remember they're only people and they're doing the best they can and they want you to love that pattern as much as they do and so they do want to help you and I hope that it helped explain 
about chain three. Sometimes it counts and sometimes it doesn't. Follow the pattern that the designer is giving you. And if you don't understand, contact that designer of that pattern. All right, has everybody clinked in? I see lots of you that snuck in. I'm Hi, Petra and Michelle and Kathy and Aurora and Susie. Let me see. I'm uh, uh, Someone asked me the other day, why do you look over there? And what it is, is I've got two screens up and I've got the screen where I'm making the video and then I've got the Facebook screen so I can see all the comments. If I didn't have the Facebook screen up, I wouldn't be able to see your comments. And that's why I look over sometimes. <laughs> So I hope everybody clinked in. I'm so glad you came in today. Before we talk about what's new this week at Posh Pooch Designs, who knows the answer to the riddle or the question? I like that one, Tina, frozen late, but that's not it. All right, if you missed the joke at the beginning of the video, it is this. Where does snowmen go to dance? <laughs> they go to the snowball. <laughs> That is the corniest thing I've ever heard, and I love it. <laughs> All right, let's talk about what's brand new this week. Well, um, I talked about this little wreath pattern. It's a video tutorial the, without words on my YouTube, but it's also a photo tutorial and a free pattern on my blog, and you can find that there. And then yesterday, we videoed our final six inch square for our year long crochet along. Now, be looking for the, uh, we're going to be doing a project using all these squares and it's not a blanket. I keep saying that because it is not a blanket. Okay, you don't have to use my six inch squares to do the project. So if you weren't following along, you can still do the project. And we're gonna do it in January. And I'm going to do it in two videos because it's going to have two steps to it. And I think you're really going to like it. What you'll need is 12 6-inch squares plus some other yarn. And I'll be sure and give you that list of, of items that you'll need after Christmas. Because we're going to it'll be after New Year's, actually, not just after Christmas. Because we're going to do this in January. So if you've been following along, you can use a whole bunch of the same kind. Or you can use whichever ones you want. But you'll need 12 six inch squares and we did this yesterday it's a photo tutorial written pattern and a video blog all right now i was asked if i had a dress pattern for dish soap and i didn't have one and i was going through my christmas stuff and i remembered that i had an apron and this is just dawn dish soap i it's my favorite I use it for everything. I even wash my dogs in it because it doesn't have any chemicals. And so this is the uh, Mrs. Claus apron. And this one is done with that sparkly cotton. And I just added a few buttons. Now, super duper easy to make. This is a video that I'm going to be doing this week and putting the pattern out. But I got to thinking, not everybody celebrates Christmas the same way. And maybe they don't want a Mrs. Claus, right? So I made a couple other ones. Let me take off Mrs. Claus's apron and put this other one on. So this one I made is a snowman. <laughs> it's the same pattern. I just embroidered his face on, added some other buttons. Oh, I'm going the wrong direction here. <laughs> there we go. And it's the same thing. Isn't he adorable? And you can leave this one on through January because January is the month of snow. And then I made this one specifically for me. See, it has a cardinal. I'm going to set this one up there on my... Uh... Because even if we have dishwashers that wash our dishes, there are still things that you need your dish soap for. Now, this size dish soap is the... Oh, my word. Let me grab my glasses. I can't see that. <laughs> Good morning, Daniel. That's my son. Okay, this is a 21 ounce, 21.6 ounce. So it'll fit your um, dish soaps that are about 19 to 24 ounces. And it, the way it's done is it's just got a strap on the top that goes over, and then you tie the knot, and I've got it pushed up. There we go. And then you just tie it around the back, and it's a little apron. Is that not the cutest thing? 
and this videos and and pattern will be out this week and I'll uh, put that out there and I'll show you how to make it in the different colors because like this one's got three colors and this one is, is two almost dropped that Dawn on the floor <laughs> and then the Mrs. Claus one has a little ruffle and so I'll show you all of those options on the video as well and so that's going to be a lot of fun to get done this week now I also finished up the Jingle Bell door ringer the Santa Claus alarm and I don't have one up here I gave my extra one to my granddaughter so it's probably at their house driving them crazy because ring 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 <laughs> so anyway I hope everyone clinked in today clink i'm so glad that you're all here now if you missed the beginning of the video and you missed my corny joke just watch it at the beginning and remember i always put them on over on my youtube page or my youtube channel not page <laughs> so you can watch them over there anytime that you want to and if you have any other questions that you'd like answered you can comment below this video or you can comment on youtube or you can comment um, on the facebook page or anywhere um, i'm on ravelry i'm on etsy on my web page anywhere um, just send me shoot me an email and i'll be happy to do my best to answer your question and if i don't know the answer I'll do the best I can to find you an answer. So everybody keep shopping this week, getting ready for all those holidays and Christmas celebrations and have a great week. And I'm so glad y'all were here this week with me.